My name is uh, Professor John Okudere Obineche from the Department of Religious and Cultural Studies of the University of Portacot here in Nigeria. And uh, we, we are still in continuation of our subject, the course on religious problems and cultural change. And uh, here we take this final topic on theories of conversion of the Africans. Of course, but generally it's a theory of conversion. But here these theories of conversion will narrow it down you know, in, the, in, in religious change, we have such theories. We narrow it down to the conversion of the Africans. The Africans who received the preachings of Islam and Christianity were said to have done so for material gains. And thus, his conversion was not genuine and was more or less of a transit experience. He was said, the, the such Africans were said to have seen Islam and Christianity as a convenient uh, recipe or means of escape from the dysfunctional aspects of the traditional religion. And that is, it is said also that uh, uh, that makes it possible, made it possible for such Africans to easily go back to his religion in the face of life's problems. So this accusation is what has made scholars write and formulate possible theories or explanations to the attitude of the African converts. The most exciting of these theories uh, of these theories was the writing of Horton. Robin Horton, in response to Peel's uh, book, Aladura, a religious movement among the Yorubas. Robin Horton was a scholar in religious studies at the University of Port Harcourt. And Horton, in responding to Peel's, J.D. Peel's book, mentioned above, wrote under the Caption African conversion took an intellectualistic approach. Peel in his book stated that the Aladura dependent independent church movement is an attempt to reinterpret and adopt Yoruba cosmology to explain, uh, predict, and control events in a new and unfamiliar change social situation resulting from the modernization process. And of course, Horton asserted that there is a two-tire arrangement, two-tire arrangement that in, in, in the spiritual world, the macro and the macrocosm, the macro, uh, macro cosmic forces, according to Horton, are localized, while the macrocosmic forces are more elaborate. In the microcosm, are the local deities or gods who went to retreat with the advent of Christianity. The theory of the retreat of the gods or the god, the deal, the deus remotus and the rejuvenation of the supreme being, whom he, has, he said is in charge of the macrocosm. Horton, of course, therefore went further to note that the beliefs and practices of Islam and Christianity were acceptable or accepted in situations where they agree with the response of the traditional worldview. He referred to the word religions as catalysts or stimulators or accelerators of change which were in the in the air already. So uh Trimingham in explaining the conversion of the African thought Africans thought about the crumbling of the structures of traditional societies and religions under the impact of modernization which left the people with Islam and Christianity as a convenient means of coping with the, situ the African situations. Of course, again, Amitu was not left out. He referred, to this, he referred to this as the shattered microcosm. So Trimihan went further to buttress this fact by observing that the average African convert retains some of his traditional beliefs in spite of strong disapproval by his church and former condemnation of this by Islam. And of course, in, in his ways, in other ways, he is saying that the vast number of Africans who drifted into the mission churches and to Islam, those who decamped we are not converted but merely changed their religion even till today we are still battling with this because 
the Africans that are converted, of course, they incorporate or what we call enculturation. We, we the, the, the Africans that are practicing religion today are mostly practicing it as enculturation. In, you know, enculturating the the African culture with the religious faith that has come. Seeing the religious faith, whether Islam or Christianity, as the foreign faith that has come and has taken over and engulfed Africa. And so the conversion, they argue, that the theories of this conversion as they argue is that the Africans are not properly converted. But in order, but to us, they are converted within because the cultures told them, the, 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 the missionary cultures of Christianity or Islam wanted the African culture thrown away, then no, forgotten, and then finished with in order to accept this new faith. And that's where we draw that. But now, what is the reaction and concept of change? There are, so, in the concept of change, we have some reactions. And these are the reactions that we are having today as we narrow them down even in three. Fundamentalism, fanaticism, and revivalism. The, 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 the reaction to the concept of change, concept of change comes up in fundamentalism and we see it in religion especially, both religion and culture. Today in Nigeria, we are seeing all aspects of fundamentalism in, religio in, in religiosity. Seeing uh, fanaticism in Nigeria, Nigeria has been uh, infected by, inflicted by Boko Haram, insurgency and others, but yet, uh, you know, it was the first that came before other aspects of uh, both social and cultural uh, aspects of insurgency came in. And then revivalism that we see. When the, these are reactions to change, when changes come, people don't take it to hook, line, and sinker, especially in Africa. There must be some who throw their legs, who are dragging towards it, being accepting it. And there are some who are fanatical about it. We are not a religion. And there are some who accept the revivalism that comes up as social change, religious change, and religious problems. I think this is where we draw the curtain. Thank you for listening this while throughout the series in this lesson or in this lecture on our subject on religious problems and cultural change. Thank you.